okay so we have gone through the high level folders inside our laravel application and there are quite a few things which we haven't you know talked in details as of now for example this app folder what does it have you know how does things work in here so let's go in go over them in details now first you will see a file called user.php this is our model okay it is like one table in your database will have one model in your application so right now we have a users table so we have a user model and there are quite a few things to talk about a model which you know um, we will go one by one but let's just at least see what do we have with user.php so user extends authenticable contract which you know implements quite a few uh, contracts in itself right and it extends model okay model is something which you will extend when you create a simple model so for example let's just open up a new terminal and with php artisan we get a command called make model and let's say we create a model for hmm, story okay now what is going to happen is we will get a story.php okay now it will by default assume that there is a stories so it understands the uh, plural form of it so user will assume that your table name is users with an s story will understand it's s-t-o-r-i-e-s okay that's your table name and you can see it extends model okay so yes the basic class or the model which we get out of the box as user then we have certain providers the app service provider is where we register or you know boot up quite a few things for example if when we do the installation on of passport we will see that we are um, you know defining the routes in the boot method you know this is uh, pretty much called even at the very early stage of bootstrapping the framework then there is authentication service where we can define our policies for example um, you know in laravel there is a concept of models with certain policies where we can uh, control what or what are the permissions for editing of a model viewing of a model uh, creating an instance of the model things like that so that's where your you know auth service provider comes into picture broadcast is primarily used when you know we are you know, working with sockets and channels and things like that and it is important uh, to get the channels.php so you can see this is being loaded in here then comes our events so event service provider so you know in laravel application we can you know use the uh, pattern of raising events throughout the application and then listening to those events on the thread or through queues and many other possibilities and this is where we can register our events and last but not the least is the route service provider okay it defines that the namespace of our controllers is app http controllers this is the reason why when we are creating any route inside our web.php okay so let's just say we do web.php and then we create a route say like slash stories right and we will assume that we have a controller called stories controller and we'll hit the index method right now how does the route file know that the stories controller is inside a particular folder this is where we define otherwise we would have to define the route 
uh, the namespace of that controller in every route okay so by default it's app HTTP controller we can mm -hmm. you know manually override them as well and the route service provider is you know, loading these two APIs so it is first loading the web routes okay and it's running through the web middleware middleware is again a concept which will come up it is loading the web.php file then it is doing a prefix api this is why i said that any route which is uh, created under the api.php file will automatically have the api prefix it also has the middleware api we will go into that it has the namespace and it is you know taking the api.php file to map okay so we saw quite a few places where it says middleware so after provider comes http where we have middleware and controllers now controllers are quite simple um, once we create a controller for example like model we can create controller stories controller okay and we'll have a controller inside http controllers now all controllers will by default extend the controller.php file which is this okay it uses a lot of traits which we can um, you know if you are interested you can go inside it however i'm not going to go into those details right now but on a basic level a controller will extend the controller in the class which has all these things you know being extended so we get a, quite a few things out of the box and we should understand that we get the ability inside every controller to get the request instance so for example it doesn't matter whether it is a get request or a post request but we will always get the request instance inside our controller and the instance will be illuminate http request instance okay i can do a return all and let's just see what happens in here so i have stories a blank page right it's returning some json because question mark name equals amitav right so it is going to it is going to re return all the request parameters for that particular um you know request um so yeah and then comes middleware okay middlewares are like the gatekeepers between the you know request hitting the route the route telling laravel that you know okay this particular route for example let's say in our case a user requests for stories route says hey you know what you need to go to this controller and you need to fire this function fair enough the request will go here but before going here into this index uh, function if we need to make certain checks or we need to do certain activities for example we need to check whether the user needs to be authenticated or not we will use middlewares if we need to track the activity of the user so for example you know in your application you want to log each and every activity of a user which page he has visited uh, what actions he has done and to take a middleware is the exact place where you should make these kind of you know code level changes so by default there are quite a few middlewares which are available for example authenticate which is used um, to ensure that the particular routes are behind login okay then there is one for check for maintenance mode encryption encryption of cookies and one thing which you will see very common is verify csrf token so any request which goes um, any post request which comes to the web.php uh, routes file okay we need to ensure that there is a token uh, generated by the form and that's where the uh, no csrf token middleware comes into picture 
how does we how do we control what middleware is to load that's where the kernel.php comes into picture so we say that there are these many middlewares available in the application these are globally available throughout the application these are some of the web level middlewares so if you would have seen inside routes.php we have in a middleware web right so these all middlewares are being loaded or you know we go through all of these middlewares whenever there's a route inside web.php and the same goes with api.php okay so that takes care of http for a bit we have exceptions we can you know write our own as exceptions on how to handle certain you know try catch pieces of the code and whether if you want to handle certain kinds of exceptions like 403 500 things like that we can write those implementations here and then one more important part is console so these are um, some of the you know commands which we can create um, on our own so if you would have seen we had used one command which is php artisan make controller now if i want to create my own for example make something else okay i can create a command and then i can extend that to get the functionality which i require all right now talked about a few folders which are here but however you will see let's say inside laravel um where is the directory structure these are basics getting started yes inside app right inside the app directory there are quite a few additional things um for example broadcasting events right jobs listeners mail notifications policies so uh, even rules so these are some of the folders which um, have been removed by default from the framework but whenever you create a new rule you know they will be created automatically so you don't need to worry so for example if i make a rule you know, it says that the directory does not exist by default but will be created for you if you execute the make rule artisan command right so these are some of the stuff which you need to go through the documentation you know i think you know uh, there is no better resource on laravel better than the documentation itself so yeah if if you would have if you have gone through the documentation in details i think you will learn a lot however you know consider these lessons as a you know, starting point so that you can quickly reference these things so this is on a high level the uh, introduction to you know the laravel directory structure what goes where and what we expect um, from the directory structure in the following lessons we will start exploring individual pieces of the framework how to use them on what kind of requirements and you know start extending our application thanks for watching guys if you like the videos do click on the thumbs up icon and do hit the help bell icon so that you get a notification the moment i upload any video on my channel